What's going on guys? Kenny here from 619 Guitars and Gear and today we are finally going to dive into and check out the GW2 Pro Headless from ERT or EART. It's definitely a pretty interesting review so if you're thinking about buying this guitar you definitely want to stick around for the whole video but with that being said let's get into it. All right, well, without wasting any time here, let's jump right into the specs. Starting at the body, you have a solid roasted ash body. I went with the natural finish just in case in the future I ever want to change it, put my own touch on it, you know, stain it or whatever. It's pretty much already ready to go. I just have to sand off the poly finish and, uh, you know, it's good. It'll just be a lot easier to do so. Uh, but they do sell it in a variety of different colors. I believe it is a new shape design. Uh, I think they came out with it last year. I'm not really 100% sure, but you can see I have the old shape behind me. I don't really like one more than the other. They're kind of both cool in their own way. Um, you have a five-piece bolt-on neck with Wenge and Paduk. Not sure if I'm saying that right, but you have these three you know, pieces of Wenge and the two pieces of Paduk. Really love the way that looks. It kind of makes the guitar look really high-end and fancy. Um, also feels really good. I've always kind of liked those darker necks, you know, a really dark roasted maple or the Wenge. It kind of just, I don't know, has a cool look to it. You have a 25.5 inch scale for the fretboard. It is rosewood, even though it's really, really dark. It kind of looks like it's either stained or it looks like it could be ebony, but they're calling it rosewood. So it is what it is. Uh, you have uh, 24 stainless steel jumbo frets, you know, and they have their, uh, you know, hemispherical fret ends, just like the older models. I really like that. Um, definitely adds a lot of comfort. And, um, you know, the frets came nice and polished, so no complaints there. Uh, for the radius on the fretboard, it is compound, so it's 9.5 to 14 inches. And then also as far as the neck shape, that is also compound. So that's really cool. You know, down by the first fret, you have what they call a C shape. And up here around the 12th fret, it goes, you know, a little bit flatter into, you know, a U shape. So really, really comfortable. You know, when you're playing down here, it's nice and kind of chunky feeling. And then when you get up here and want to shred, I mean, not me personally, but uh, it's nice and, you know, skinny and flat feeling. So you get a lot of, uh, you know, range with your hand, I feel like. Uh, you have regular uh, pearl offset dot inlays, um, regular white side dots. You have a dual action truss rod with the spoke wheel style adjuster up here by the neck pickup. I've always liked that even on guitars without, you know, with the headstock, I should say. It's just a lot easier to adjust and uh, kind of cleans up the whole look of the headstock and stuff. So that's always good. Um, you have a bone nut and a zero fret, so that's really cool. Uh, the nut looks to be in good shape. Uh, moving on to electronics, you have one volume, one tone, you know, three-way switch. And then for the pickups, they're calling them their ERT or EART custom covered modern 57 Alnico humbuckers. That's a lot to say. And uh, yeah, they sound pretty good. I'm pretty sure these are the same pickups that were in the other model. Even though I want to say those were the classics, I'm not really sure. Um, but, you know, they sound decent. No really need to change them right now, in my opinion. Um, and then let's move on to this bridge. The bridge was one of my main attractions to buying this model, or the Pro model, I should say. Uh, just because they, you know, updated it to the barrel style tuners. Not that I hated the old bridge, but uh, you know, using that winder to tune it and stuff was just kind of a kind of a pain when it's a lot easier to just have the barrel style tuners. Um, but the old bridge, if it was set up correctly, I have zero problems with it. Um, I made a video on how I go about setting it up, and it helped a lot of people. I think the people that hated it just uh, you know weren't setting it up correctly, in my opinion. But everyone has their preference, so it is what it is. And then to go with the bridge, they have an updated uh, locking headpiece, I guess you would call it, um, where you have the dual locking uh, set screws. And then in there is two little ball bearings in each hole. Um, it kind of just helps lock the string down. Um, 
I don't know if I really like the whole ball bearing thing just because, you know, when you do a string change, just more parts you can lose. But I mean, I guess it functions well, so that's all that really matters. But overall, I really like the updates that they did on this model. Uh, the output jack is in the same spot, so nice and hidden away. So that's always good. But yeah, let's go ahead and plug this thing in real quick and do some sound demos. And then we're going to have a serious conversation afterwards. All right, so normally this would be the part of the video where I throw this thing on the bench and, uh, you know, we take the measurements and see how this thing comes set up from the factory. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk to you guys about some stuff. So if you missed the unboxing video, I'll put the link here. But you'll see right off the bat um, with unboxing this guitar, I had some issues um, in that video. I don't know if it happened in shipping or what, but the low E saddle was completely backed out at a scale length and there's a little nipple that sits in a groove so it can't go uh, back and forth and when you would tighten up the low E string to tune up it would you know shift sideways um, I knew I would be able to fix it so it wasn't a huge deal but like I mentioned in that video um, you know for someone that doesn't know how to work on guitars it could be a problem that would cause them to either have to return it or pay someone to fix it so right out of the box it would be kind of crappy to play and uh you know before i really get into this i want to say this is not taking a shot at the company at all if anything they've been really good with communicating with me and you know they offered me to uh you know return the guitar and I chose to keep it, keep it so, you know, if anything, it's on me. But I did want to point out what I had to do to this guitar to make it even playable. So when it came down to uh, going to set this guitar up, I went to try and set my action. 
and I could not get it any lower than around two millimeters or maybe even a little above that. These little adjusters were bottoming out all the way and my action was still super high. So looking at it, I discovered that there is a little plate that the tuners mount on and these little, this plate has four screws that mounted to the body. Um, I'll try to post some pictures. I did take some pictures, so I will put them up here. They used round top screws to mount this plate. And what that caused was for my low E and high E in the position where these screws are on the plate, there was a gap between the plate and the tuner. So it was making it so these strings could not go any lower or would you know max out at the lowest adjustment and they would still be high because there was about a millimeter gap because the round top screws were making it so it could not sit flush. So I did message the company and uh, you know bought this up to them. Like I said, they offered me to return it, but I you know told them I was going to keep it and just try and fix it myself. And uh, what I ended up doing was just going out and buying four flat top screws. So that way, you know, everything was flush with the plate. And these now sit nice and perfectly flush on the plate like they're supposed to. And what was really cool was a couple days after that, they had messaged me back. And um, I guess they had contacted the uh, factory. And the factory is now going to be using flat top screws. So it's kind of good that I bought that up to them. And uh, it seems like it will be fixed from now on. Not really sure if anyone else had that issue. Um, but I just wanted to point it out to you guys. Um, so that was something I had to do. Another problem that I was having is when it came to tuning up, just putting it in regular standard tuning with the strings that came on it, I was popping strings. I popped my high E and I even went and bought, you know, two more sets of strings and I popped the high E on those sets too. And I pretty sure it's just the design of the bridge. Um, it's kind of like two prongs that hold the ball end and that's what it pulls on to, you know, pitch the string up or down or whatever. And basically what was happening is when I would get, you know, kind of close to where it needed to be, it was just pulling on the string so hard that it was just unwinding it from the ball end. Um, kind of sucks. What I ended up having to doing, uh, having to do is I either, you know, tried to solder the winding so it couldn't come undone or I went out and bought a set of tremolo reinforced strings and that seems to have done the trick. Um, the gauge that I have on here right now isn't the gauge that I really want, but that's all I had at the time. So I probably will buy the right gauge uh, soon. Um, but at least, you know, I got it to where I can at least tune it and play it. Um, so that was another issue I was having. And I went on Amazon and uh, read the reviews and there was a couple other people that were having that issue too. So I think it's just the design of the bridge. Uh, I know there's a couple other companies out there that use a design similar to this. My uh, H-string Legator that I had, or Legator, was uh, pretty much the same design where it pulled on the ball end to uh, you know, tune it, but I never really had that issue with that guitar. Um, so just something worth pointing out to you guys. Um, I pretty much have it now to where it's playable. Um, but it took a lot of work to get this thing to even play. You know, I couldn't even play it out of the box. Um, I mean, I could, but the action was like kind of ridiculous. Um, now, again, this isn't to deter you from buying one of these. Um, like I said, from now on, it seems like they're going to be updating the screws that they put in that plate. But if you have one uh, or get one that ha not doesn't happen to be updated, um, you're going to have to probably do that now maybe not but i did uh you know i would take these tuners off see if the you know screws are sticking up past the surface of the mounting plate and if they are i would just change them to the flat top screws uh, so you don't have any issues but if you look you will see there is no gap now i'll try to get a close-up of it um, so just check yours out see if you have that issue and that's the fix you're going to have to do to make it right um, other than that, really not too many other issues that I found. Uh, only thing I found is that in the cavity, there's no shielding paint or tape. Um, not a huge deal because I can take care of that myself. But I mean, that is kind of something they should be doing from the factory. Um, I never bought that up to them. I probably should have. But, 
you can easily do that yourself with you know you know you can either make your own shielding paint or you can you know buy it or get to tape or whatever you have to do um not a huge deal but it would definitely help uh, a little bit in my opinion but everything else seems to be pretty good the frets are pretty decent they're not perfectly level but uh it's not to the point where it's like unplayable or anything um so those are my only two you know major complaints with this guitar um again i don't want to deter you from buying one of these uh but there is some things you might have to do to make it play good or even make it playable at all now there is some other reviews on youtube of this particular model i'm not sure if you know ert or eart sent those people the guitars which if they did it would probably explain why they don't point stuff like that out but uh yeah i want to be completely honest with you guys like i always am and just tell you the exact issues that i found but it's pretty much where it needs to be now i don't have the right gauge strings that i like on here so once i get that it'll be even better but i've been playing it and enjoying it and i really like this guitar and i'm looking forward to uh making this a project and putting my own uh you know special touch on it like i did with the old one and uh that's going to be cool that'll probably be you know happening more towards springtime just so i can use my shop and everything without freezing uh but pretty much it for this video i know it's a little bit different of a review than normal but i definitely wanted to point this stuff out to you guys but as always i really appreciate all of you watching hopefully you stuck around to the end uh, i'm gonna have some more videos coming up like i said i'm gonna try changing things up where we do you know different things like check out some new guitars or or I, you know, started a new series called Tone Time where we dial in good tones using either my amp or different plugins and stuff like that. And I also want to start a new series where we just put the guitar on the bench and maintenance it and restring it, do what I have to do and just hang out. So that's a couple ideas I have. Let me know uh, what you guys think in the comments. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me on Instagram or in the comment section, and I will definitely answer you guys. So as always, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, be a good person. Drink a lot of water. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.